I want to briefly go over naming ionic substances. For the main group elements, the naming system is pretty straightforward. Elements in groups 1A, 2A, and 3A form only one type of cation. The name of the cation is just the name of the metal followed by the word ion. So with hydrogen, it would just be hydrogen ion. Lithium, it would be lithium ion and so on going down. For group two, it would be the same thing, uh, magnesium ion, calcium ion, and for aluminum, it would be aluminum ion. The ions can only form one charge, so the naming system does not need to be complex. Next, we can start naming monoatomic anions. Anions are named by adding IDE to the stem of the name. Here are some monoatomic anions we deal with most often. So looking at nitrogen with a negative charge of 3, we would put IDE after the stem, so it would be nitride. And picking one from group 6, um, oxygen has a negative charge of 2, stem is ox, so we would put IDE after the stem, it would be ox, oxide. Looking at group 7, stem name would be fluor, and the anion name would be fluoride by adding IDE to the stem name. So far, we've named monoatomic ions. Now we can move to polyatomic ions. I can show a few tips on, on naming these, but the best way to learn them is just to memorize them. Starting out with, starting out with I and 8 with nitride and nitrate, you can see that um, 8 has one more oxygen than I. Something else to point out is the, the prefix di. There should be a 2 on this. And di means 2. Here we have dihydrogen. That means when it's a prefix like this, it means there's 2. So there's 2 hydrogens on dihydrogen phosphate. Again, with sulfur, there's it and 8. 8 means there's one more oxygen. Now let's talk about binary ionic compounds and how to name them. Binary ionic compounds contain only two elements, and both elements are present as ions. To name the ionic compound, we first name the metal that the cation was formed from. So an example would be sodium chloride. The sodium ion came from the metal sodium, so the first part of the name would be sodium. The second part of the naming system would be to simply name the anion. So in sodium chloride, the anion would be chloride, so the name would be sodium chloride. So I'm just going to make a table and give some examples of names. So we have the metal of the cation plus the anion. Examples would be lithium, bromide, silver, sulfide, sodium, bromide. Magnesium chloride, aluminum oxide, lithium iodide. So again, these are the metals that the cations were formed from on the left, and these are the anions on the right. A couple names I want to highlight or point out is aluminum oxide and silver sulfide. If you notice, their formulas have a subscript. Silver has a subscript of 2 right here. Aluminum has a subscript of 2 here, and oxygen has a subscript of 3. Um, we do not take this into consideration when we name the compound. These are simply negated. Next, we can look at ionic compounds that have polyatomic ions. To name ionic compounds with polyatomic ions, we first name the positive ion, and then we name the negative ion. When we name the positive ion, we name the metal that the ion was formed from, and then we name the negative ion. We've already went over naming polyatomic ions, so with that information, we have everything we need to name this ionic compound. We can split this up and find that the positive ion comes from the sodium atom, so the first part of the name would be sodium. We can find the negative ion right here, and we know how to do this from naming polyatomic ions. And from that, we know that this is nitrate because there are three oxygens. We can break this up into two parts as well. 
the positive ion would come from the metal calcium. So we write calcium. The negative ion is carbonate. Going below this, we can break this up into two parts. The sodium ion comes from the metal sodium. The negative ion comes from dihydrogen phosphate. 